Before we begin, we would like to say that in our opinion, the following presentation is not suitable for children or for those of you who may have a nervous disposition. Howdy folks, look who's back, back again, brand new channel, hee ho hee hen. It's Sunday night, it's Audio Who, and it's been 30 seconds into this podcast, and as yet I've not swore. Not bad, not bad at all. You may see with us this evening, we have some familiar faces from the ghost of Christmas past. Um, good to have them back, but before we get to that, what are we doing this evening? Tonight we have gathered to discover and delve into and talk brass tacks over the Big Finish Productions seventh Doctor novel adaptation from the new Virgin Adventures entitled Nightshade. We have Ned Will there with his uh, best impression of a game show stewardess. There you go, well done. Well done, Mick, yes. Nightshade. What did we like? What did we not like? What was different for the book? What was the same as the book? You're about to find out. Before we get to that, oh, let's get to this. It's your panel for this evening. Joining us, as ever, soon to star in a whole new Broadway production of Annie Get Your Gun, it's our buddy Jason. Jason, how are you doing, mate? Doing good. Do you have to, do you have to stay in cold? Good to have you aboard, mate. You know, good to have you aboard, as always. And we have Mr... Matthew Rose, how are we doing, Matt? Hello. Good to have you fresh from a, a convention once again this weekend in the world of the universe. It's my buddy for Corpus Christi. He's been with us for many incarnations. He has the beard that must be feared. This Texas town, well, how are we doing, Tom? Hello. Good to have you, mate. And back for, by, well, I wouldn't say popular demand, but he's back anyway. It's the scourge of Tottenham. It's Phil Archer. How are we doing, Phil? Good evening, Graham. Good to be here. Good to have you, mate. Nice to see you again. And it's NYC's own Mr. Will Medina. Always a great to have him on the show, and it's good to have him back. How are we doing, mate? Hey, now. How you doing, everybody? Good to have you, man. And we have <coughs> Minnesota Gavin Freeman, Mr. Elijah Crailing. How are we doing, uh, Elijah? Doing good, Graham. Got my book. Haven't read it yet. Yes, thank you, Terence Dix. It's not his book. So, yeah, um, Nightshade. Everybody knows me, so on we go. We have the 1960s. We have a, a quaint little Midlands town. We have a bar, one of my favourite places. Um, and we have various entities feeding on the fears and memories of others. And in the midst of all this, We've got a cookie old actor reliving his past glories. The Doctor and Ace arrive, and utter death and insanity ensues. And to boot, you have a pissed off uh, scientist guy in the local facility who wants to kill his groundskeeper and his uh, security guard. But that notwithstanding, what do we think about this? Oh, let's find out. Fucking thoughts, guys. Nightshade. So first of my coin, Sophie Aldred. Okay, Elijah, give me your initial opening thoughts on Nightshade, mate. Well, uh, just finished the story before we started recording. Hmm. Fresh off from listening to this. And I have to say, this is a really, I don't know, it's a really juicy audio story. Like, even at the beginning, it says this may not be, you know, good for young viewers or listeners mm -hmm. to this. And I was like, okay, so what's going on here? And I have to say, Mark Gatiss did a great job with this. Hmm. And compared to his TV work, this was pretty good. Okay, let's not go and bash sleep no more. Hey, no I, I never said that. No, but we knew what you were thinking. Maybe um, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> no, you did me. Um, anything else? Uh, cast was great and pretty interesting ending. Hmm. Somewhat of a cliffhanger, even though it wasn't. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. Okay, Jason, opening thoughts, Nightshade? 
I found that pretty interesting. Um, like the very beginning of it, the whole music theme, um, the Monsters almost had me a bit confused for a moment, thinking they had a bit of a Cyberman voice between it, but the story itself, pretty intense. Um, Ace building up whole character on this one, definitely always a great performance by her. I'll go more detail later on that. I actually like it. Okay, mate, champion. Well, have you read the book? How did that sit with you? Well, I didn't read the book yet, but I had, I checked on certain stuff. Mm. This the audio, this audio stuff. I was really shocked. There was a great story that I, like that's like I wanted to get the books, the books. I thought I might have time to read it, but I'm busy reading mm. other books right now. I I when the doctor used the the a lord the lord to for the creature, yeah. and then his granddaughter showed up. Spoiler alert for those who didn't never have read it. Yeah. Um, I got I got a little sad about it because I say, wow, he he thinks about her, but he doesn't bother to go visit her. Well, if you if you if you think about, I talk about this the, the seventh doctor. Yeah. And, and, and the way if you look at it, from all the other past doctors, the only other one that really seen her is um the eighth one. Mm -hmm. if, if you if you look at it, um. The, 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 uh, what's funny, you could tell that right in the beginning there's a mystery because of the history of the observatory and what, 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 what stood there before it and what happened way before that. So you knew that observatory had a was the main focal point. Focal point. And the funny thing is the whole story took place in one day. Yeah. In one Another. Day. In the Indeed. audio. In the audio. But in the book, I think it took a couple of days because um, there's certain characters that's not in the audio that, that appeared in the book. So. Yeah. All right. I, I, I liked it. I liked it very much. Mm. I, I look forward to more of the novel um, novel adaptation done by Big Finish. You know, to look forward to it. I will tell you more when we go. When we let the no problem, man. Okay, champion. Timbo. That was just one for you. Hold my thoughts. It's very good, isn't it? It's, um, it's uh, a pretty clever original story uh, that I, I it's it's an odd idea that the doctor decides he just wants to go on vacation. I mean, out of nowhere, it's just like really, and it it's kind of odd that you know he pretty much has to be dragged kicking and screaming into doing what is really his job, mm. which is saving people from you know monsters. And I think it's <laughs> pretty cleverly done. Um, I know it's quite different from the book, going by the behind the scenes. Uh, they changed things up quite a bit as far as yeah. him and Ace were concerned, but I think that was a good thing because it it it, it really should fit into the big finish continuity of, of doing things and 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 flow easily because this is very early i mean this 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 is like shortly after the final series i mean series 26 mm -hmm. uh, it's only the the what eighth eighth book in the series of new adventures so it's, it's a pretty early story and uh this is very well done isn't it yes okay man great always good when you appreciate what you're listening to philip um the avid bravado of everything big finish Regale us with your words of wisdom. Opening thoughts. Opening thoughts. Um, although I've, I've um, read the original book when it first came out, I somewhat forgotten what it's um, the greater detail. But the audio itself, let's stick with that for now. Um, it's good. It's a good little play out. Um, I do like the fact that with the um, Professor, I can't say the name, I can't say it, Trufithi, you know, uh, nice Trufithi, with, Trufithi was the actor who played yeah. the professor. Yeah, the actor. Oh, the actor the, nice the right? Yeah. The, um, the um, nightshade. I like how they kind of gave him Tom Baker's words, like, I used to be the professor. I was adored. And I, I kind of hit mm. him there. Like, I made you laugh. But the, um, I did find it a bit confusing that the creatures were not really visually put out. Because I'm trying to work out in my head what they look like and how they are. And they're not really, not really clear on that. You just got Similar to the book cover, I guess, the way that he was describing. The, the creature was different for everybody's interpretation of their own fear. Yeah, yeah I know they were like, like giant termite type of things, but yeah. it's just not clear how they come across. And um, it was nice to hear, as Will said, uh, uh, um, um, Caroline Ford do, a, do, a, do, do, do some lions. Do yeah, cameo. Yeah. cameo. But that was nice. And I do like the fact that uh, Tiffany McCoy was quite angsty in this story. He's very like that and he's, also, he's a bit of a manipulated piece of um, person so there you go yeah. well, he, cool. I'll, I'll concur with that this was a good lesson for two hours but yeah um, Sly in this was uh, 
he was rather pissed off at times. Uh, <laughs> It really was. It was just, oh, I can't be bothered with this shit. I mean, why am I getting dragged into this? Um, yeah, the, Tim used the term vacation. I think the word retirement was batted about as well. Um, he was just, he just had enough. He, he was at the end of his tether. He, I'm like, he's like, fuck that shit. I'm out of here. I'm, I'm done. I've had enough. Um, but obviously, the events of the story, um, you know. But it's also interesting that whenever Ace has a love interest he doesn't like it he, he's a very jealous kind of doctor who he likes to make yeah, sure i don't think i don't think he, he well, you gotta remember that this is taking place in 1968 so mm. her knowledge of what goes on in the future is not good for her to be there yeah if you gotta remember the robin the the, the guy he likes her as her mm. and you know same, yeah. same thing with ace with him but the thing is that dr knows she cannot stay there you know mm. her knowledge of the future because yeah. remember, she mentions her alarm going off, and he yeah, said, that, yeah, she had that on her. Mama, you uh, the watch, yeah, yeah, yeah. that watch was on. And she mentioned the Rolling Stones, how different they are. You know, was... Yeah, I mean, as I was saying, um, yeah, the doctor's characterization was totally out there on this. The whole love angle for race, okay, I, I suppose if you're going chronologically, this is the first time it's happened. It happens a few more times as we go doing our timeline. Mm -hmm. Next freaking book being Love and War. Um, but, um, well, I introduced another character too, yeah, so. Yeah, well, 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 we'll get, well, we says for another day. Well, we says for another day. Um, but yeah, yeah, um, I thought what a death in this day. It was really, really dark, you know, and I, I enjoyed that. Um, it sort of went with a somber tone of the story. Well, as the, the novels were, though, they were more, they were not adult, like, adult oriented, like, like, yeah. You know, they die, like certain, um, like you said, the violence that was there and uh, other novels, you, uh, I think they made, there's um, one or two novels that had profanities in it. And, yeah. uh, and of course you have like relationships between certain people like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that, that's you're, not, you're not going to see that in the TV. So <laughs> Here's a review from a hippie. Hi, as a kid. On route to Minnesota, but based in California. Take it away, Sue. Foreman with my review of Nightshade, Nightshade the seventh doctor and ace. The doctor and ace were uh, were involved with this this community of people and they uh, the doctor was trying to um, retire actually and re retire to a monastery that was nearby and ace was trying to sort out because she instantly was attracted to this man named robin and she spent the 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 adventure getting to know this fellow robin and making um yeah, flirting with him and and making uh, trying to build a relationship, you know, spending the time to get to know each other, talking at, at length, going and and solving the questions in the in the in the adventure together, and and then the doctor finally told her about Susan and Susan Foreman, who he had. He, he had uh, watched grow, grow to be a woman too, and um, there was a, uh, it, was, it was almost a parallel story to what went on in, in Dalek Invasion of Earth. The, the doctor was watching Ace connect with this man, and almost um almost left the, the tardis really and it was it was a good uh it was after the remembrance of the daleks because they they talked about the hand of omega and um and it was it was like she she had uh the nightshade followed remembrance of the daleks which meant that the the romance that she tried to start with that that sergeant that mike guy in remembrance of the daleks 
was, went bad because he, he 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 was working for the Daleks, and then in this one he the 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 man was being attacked, but he was willing to work with her and you know spend the time on the relationship and stuff, and that's really amazing. So yeah, those things made this. Uh, it's a really interesting romance, and um, and it, it it's a two part, two one hour segments, uh, and uh, I'll give it uh, I'll give it a nine. I really enjoyed the 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 character arc of Ace growing up, and and you know redemption from. Mike and 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 then making the firm decision that the that the doctor was who she needed to be with and that she would continue on in the TARDIS. That was a big decision. I can't imagine making that decision because you know I'm romantic and and it's and it would be like so intensely emotional. So, yeah, that's what I have. Thanks. No, no, there you go. So there you go, yeah. All in all, guys, a good way of listening and a good uh, adaptation of Mark Gatiss' original book. That's how I see it. All right, guys, any events, characters, or instances within the story that stood out for you? Um, Jason, what's the on you on this one? What do you reckon, mate? Well, the doctor always a great performance, even how mm -hmm. intense it got with him with um, the fact that he had to remember the part about Susan and how the creature starts coming involved into that. Yeah. And how he yeah. ended up tricking the, how, the, how when he had help it, the, tricking the creature itself with the whole supernova and black hole, we really definitely loved that. Um, even especially how the creature feeds off like the feel of people and yeah. Definitely really great for the story itself. Um, I really love it. Ace, top notch, top notch of a character. Definitely a mm -hmm. top notch. He's always a great companion on this one. Um, the other characters, I uh, feel more, a bit of more of a background, but either way, it was a good story and all, and I definitely mm -hmm. quite enjoyed it. Excellent. Uh, did, we get, did Matt have a chance to say anything about anything? Yeah, yeah, he did. I didn't realize you were sitting there, but it was okay, just off a quick in his viewpoint. And then you mentioned Matt. Matt, your turn. <laughs> I really did like this one. Um, like Elijah, I finished it before it came on, and it is, uh, it's not done by the original writer who's not gone back and redone it like Justin Richards did for Theatre of War, where he wrote it all himself. Someone else did it. Um, it's a great all in all story i love mccoy so differently like, as it's been covered like he can't be bothered he's at the end i just want to retire become a hermit maybe he'll become a radagaster brown in the audios <laughs> but um it was Always so space away for that bob poo no continue when you go on, mate. <laughs> uh, one of my favorite highlight scenes still is him reciting the very first goodbye he did to Susan as the first doctor. That was one of my favorites. When Seven just like, one day I shall come back. And it's all in his mindset. And I love that. Um, the villains, I was still confused about them. I'm like, I'm, again, as they are giant insects, the voices just cut through me. And I'm like, are they here, there, everywhere? Like, especially the guy mentioned the nightshade where people hmm. in costume then they turn out to be aliens the separate ones it just it's a bit of a bizarre story but i love the ending where ace is having to make a choice and they just mm. they were the doctor back in the tardis it's a good story but it's just like they were hoping to pick off somewhere with that but that just stayed on and it's always great with with the doctor and ace their dynamic always changes one minute it's a great friendship of us like oh I'm going to manipulate you yeah. and she knows that, which is what makes Nightshade stand out that she realizes that the doctor does do that sometime to her it, it's all in all a great story I have to oh. say okay champion mate um Elijah what about you 
Kind of stand up? Uh, I actually didn't mind the voices of the creatures saying Nightshade. Uh, I thought they were kind of cool. Uh, there was one quote in here that the doctor said, think about how one thing can stir up nostalgia in all of us. So I thought that was kind of a cool thing to say. Like, it could even be, even today, like one item can bring back so many different memories for for us. So yeah, that was pretty good. Uh, it was cool to see a different dynamic with Ace and the Doctor. You know, the Doctor's different than what you've seen him before, and I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I liked about it. Okay, mate, champion. Tempo, we'll see you. This, this very much feels like a, a TV episode from uh, series 26. It, mm. uh, it's, it's very much like that series or like those, those two series with the, the seventh Doctor and Ace. Yeah. Um, I would say it would be a good one to recommend to somebody who wasn't familiar with Big Finish and wanted to get into it. You know what I mean? Because it's very much like a TV episode, I would say. I also like the way that, though, you have a, a guy who was in a TV show once it, it, it's kind of a reflection of what was going on with Doctor Who at the time because you have a show that was canceled yeah. years ago that was, you know, had a lot of fans and they were writing books now. So here they, they had a, the idea of having a TV show about a guy with monsters and stuff like that, fighting monsters. And it's, it's, it's kind of the same thing, isn't it? It's, it's yeah. And they keep on intimating that, wait, maybe they, maybe they want to bring it back, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> and it's, yeah. uh, it's really good. Uh, hmm. This would have been a uh, if, if Ace had decided to stay behind. This would have been a good exit for her. Uh, mm. I would think. I mean, uh, at the time, fortunately, she didn't, and she stayed with the Doctor and continued forever and ever and ever and ever. But uh, in other adventures and books and all that stuff. But it's it's it, it's 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 a good it's a good story for both of them. Sorry, I got a little tongue tied. Ah, I don't get like Will was mentioning a while ago. Um, why didn't he just go visit Susan? It, it probably would have just. Uh, put it up his mind because he was really depressed or something and he decides he wants to go on vacation mm -hmm. or just, you know, not do what he's doing anymore, you know, and he's thinking about Susan a lot. I don't know why he just didn't go visit her because, the you know, like, like Will mentioned later on, the eighth doctor doesn't have any problem visiting her, but it's just her several times. So it's just like, uh, I, 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 I think it's just it's down to the fact that even then in his seventh body, he wasn't able to control the TARDIS maneuvers properly. Oh, no, he, can, he controls everything, the seventh doctor. Yeah. yeah. He's a manipulative little bastard. Of course, he controls yeah. everything. Yeah, but there's a difference, though. He can control a game in an adventure, but he can't control the ship itself. Mm. Well, I think by that time he could. I, I would say that probably by the by the fourth Doctor, he was pretty much in control of it. He would still end up out in the wrong place sometimes, but it wasn't like the first Doctor or the second Doctor. They had no idea where they were going. I don't know. Mm. That's all another subject, but yeah. Uh, it's just, um, yeah, I think, I think it's, a, it's a very good story that, like I said, would be a good intro if somebody wanted to get into audios and didn't know what they were expecting. You know, so. Fair point, Matt. Fair point. Phil, how about you? Um, I did like the, um, the Ace's boyfriend thing, a bloke. Um, I like the fact that um, he had an, an emotional attachment to the man who is or isn't his father, the, the pub I mean, That was his stepfather. Yeah. And the, oh the, yeah, yeah, the boy, the boy who get basically decomposed. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the emotional attachment to to him and 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 the guy was quite well played out. And when the man died, he was all in bits and everything. I thought that was mm -hmm. nice. Okay, mate. Anything else? Not you? No, no. Over, it's just overall okay story. And you know, I've I listened to it about four times already since it's been out. So it's you kind of I repeat this thing. Four times since April. Nightshade fatigue for Mr. Archer there. Well, how about you? Uh, what's weird is that um, this, um, the, um, Trevor Tick, who, the actor who played yeah, Nightshade, yeah. mm -hmm. he, they must, Mark Gettys must have known this. If you listen to the sto um, Nightshade's stories that, that he remembers, those are all stories of Professor Quatermass, of the Quatermass mm -hmm. films. Yeah, it's, if you look, if, if you think about it, every little scenario, every segment, yeah, every segment is from one of the Quater Mass movies. Mm. It, you know, all the different ones and the 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 TV movie that they did in the UK. Yeah, the, the, every little scenes. And I was like, yeah, that's Quater Mass. I mean, I call it, I call it, you, you couldn't, you can't mention the name because that's kind no. of, 
but I, 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 I knew if the better was Quaid Man, so that really stood out. That uh, that I, the they that they're still thinking about that character. Would you? It, it would have been nice. It'd be nice to see him show up at Big Finish. Uh, <laughs> look, it was weird. I didn't realize to after I listened to it that um, Mrs. Hollins was mm. voiced by Louise Jameson. I, I, I had to look it up. I said, "Wait, that's Louise Jameson," and, 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 and it, 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 it was her. Mrs. Hollins was the one who done the. She, her husband passed away. But, uh, wasn't Jill, he? Jill, Jill Hollins. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The one that died in the church, basically. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't yeah. that wasn't Louise Jameson, was it? Was bit, I know. Um, I looked it up, and it said that was Louise Jameson that played Mrs. Hollins. Are you sure? Yeah, it said Louise James. I'm looking at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she must have put on one hell of a voice or hear that. You know what it is? Her, 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 that voice is uncredited in the, the audio. It's, it's uncredited and it got two people. That's well, why. someone sent a tweet to Big Finish and asked them on Twitter. Yeah, if anybody knows, guys, can you leave some comments? I know I've only got like 14 subscribers and they've only watched this for like four months, but, uh, you know, just, just leave some comments. Um... Do you know? Oh, can I, do you know what? I it had kind of parallels to um, um, what's that Doctor Who Unbound series? Um, Deadline. It reminded me of Deadline when I was listening to it, in the sense of the the writer, you know. Oh, oh uh, yeah, they yeah they remember the uh, character. Yeah, yeah, it had that kind of similar similarity. Yeah, story. with that with that actor going to um Nightshade. Yeah. Yeah. But what's weird is that um in the novel the. The scientist that's that's using the telescope at that in the book he's he's you see him uh, as racist in the book he's very racist. Mm. But right there, he, in the, 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 thank goodness they cut that out of the audio. I mean, no, he didn't need to do that. And um, oh, what the sixties, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. that's why it was the sixty. That's where it was. But a uh, movie, uh, an audio that, that that's just going on the two hours mm. didn't need that. Needed not need added yeah. stuff like that. What was the what was the scientist's name again? I forgot his name. He his name oh, is a real actor or no, no the character Dr. Hawthorne. Hawthorne. Dr. Hawthorne. Doctor Hawthorne. Yeah, exactly. I quite liked him. He was snippy. He was he was abrupt. He was you know oh you brought Pinky and Perky again. How lovely. Mm. You know uh, yeah. just <laughs> you know he just he wanted to, he wanted solitude and he wanted to get his work done. This isn't a bloody library, you know. Can't just bring anyone in here. It's um, a government facility. Why is everybody coming <laughs> in? <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, no, yeah. Paul Form was good for a side character. Um, as has been mentioned, folks, an awful lot of death in this one. A foul boss or the poor yeah, old in, deals. In the, book, <laughs> there, in the book, there were more deaths in the book. Yeah, we'll have to cut a few things out. I mean, come on. T -t -t <clears throat> well, you need, well, there was a big mass killing in the church. Yeah, because uh, oh, yeah. when they heard it, when they when yeah. they heard it, when they heard the people together, they started singing to keep them calm. But the song was making them remember people yeah. who they lost, and they started showing up, and they started dying. That's yeah, that. that's that, that's the crux of the villain of this piece, folks. Um, they, they feed on the memories and the past experiences and fears of the the, the supposed victims, and uh, you know that poor Joe in the church, man. You know, third year wedding anniversary. Oh, oh dear. There you go. That's one way to go. Um, but yeah, all in all, not a bad tale, folks. The, the, the regulars are as awesome as ever. Even the, the fella that played Robin, the actor's name escapes me. We'll need to be more prepared next week, folks. This is absolutely unprepared. Samuel Barnett. There you go. Will's got me, got, got my back. Yeah, Samuel Barnett. Even he was good um, for playing the... That type of character in the era, the era he was in. Uh, I mean, in, in, um, in the novel, he waited for age for five months. Um, okay. I have so one, there we go. Oh, on, sorry, I was going to say, ask Tim a question, but he's on the phone, so I can't ask him. Um, Hello. In regards to, in regards to um, changing up the, um, the situation with Ace, I've yes. wondered, I was going to ask Tim, um, have they done that along, again, along, along, along the range, the book range? Because I'm sure she left again. At some point, she, along she leaves in Love and War. Yeah, and War. right. And there's another one. Um, the one I can't remember the cover. The cover's her with a gun and everything. And she's wearing all black, black leather. She comes back. I think. She comes back. She comes back. Okay. Was that, was that the one, Lucifer Rising? Yeah, I think it is. I'm not sure. She comes back uh, older and tougher. And if they ever did that one, big furnace, go hire Tom Ellis. Thank you. Um, oh, what Lucifer one? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be nice. 
Yeah. Okay, nice. folks. Uh, so, yeah, all in all, good story and well worth your time. All right, guys, open mic portion of this podcast. Anything else you want to bring up before we get this sucker in the can and rated? Uh, yeah, what they should do is next time they should bring in um, the Traxy on this one. The Metatraxy, remember this? Oh. That's who I thought they were. In, in some the Meta Tracy, okay. Like, they're very similar to them, so you're, you're quite right. It'd be, more, it'd be more funny if they had, like, the, the, them trying to fight the emotions against the Meta Tracy and seeing how that all works out for next time. That's an idea. Hmm. Fair point, Jason. Hmm. And that was good. Nothing to well, no. that, but the, that lad, he mentions a building, or some sort of church building, in the town, is it? And was that mentioned in um, a big Finnish story with Pete Davidson and, and his crowd, where the um, what do you call those? Um, what are they called the Sontar of the Enemy. What do you, what do you call them? The Rutans. The Rutans. Yeah. yeah, there's a story where um, the Rutans um, invade invade this castle and it gets blown up. Hmm. It, it, if it's in there, it's probably just an Easter egg, like a throwback thing. For I, I wouldn't, yeah. I wouldn't go reading too much into it. I mean, you know. But by God, this is the internet, and people don't oh, read enough and everything that's else. What, that story was called Castle of Fear. That's one Castle of Fear. Is that one of the missing adventures? No, no, no. That's the big Finnish audio, Castle the of Fear. The main range. Oh, okay. Well, we, we may get to that, and then Phil can answer his embody question. So, sure. yeah, there you go. The, the writer in the uh, extras, he, he has a whole section where they interview him, and he... he, he, he um, he really had to cut quite a bit out and, and, and rework a lot of it because it yeah. was, like, like I said, it's a pretty intense novel, I guess. And it's like he had to really streamline it so that you could fit it into a two hour play. And um, he had to change it quite a bit, according to him, because he said the doctor and Ace were a lot more snippy in the book. They weren't mm -hmm. they weren't exactly getting along anymore. And he, he he wanted it to feel more like a TV episode, I think, to where they were, yeah. you know, cool. <laughs> Do you think it's good that they that they done that, or would you prefer it in its actual proper originality? Well, you should know you have Love and War, the book, and the audio. The, no, but I'm saying I'm just saying. You know, but they see, no, no, this is nice to talk about. The next novel was Love and War, and the audio they see leave after that audio. I think I think it's 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 better that they 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 do it this way for the audio play. I mean, you always have the option. Well, you don't always have the option of buying the book because they're out of print. But I mean, mm. I, it would be it'd be cool if they did have the uh, you know audio book reading of the book. But I mean, this mm. this is something. This is Big Finish putting their stamp on an established book, I guess, and making it and t telling the same story, just doing it in their way. I mean, and I, I don't I don't really yeah. have a problem with that. I think they've done that already with the other novels anyway. And they're gonna have to cut something. I mean, you can't. Otherwise, it'd be like a nine-hour drama. Yeah. You know, they include everything, so. Okay. Excellent, folks. Well, if we're done, mm. and I've waited nearly six months to say this, it's that time again. You're free to nipple. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you back, Well, <laughs> Greetings time. Nightshade. Sylvester McCoy and Sophie Aldred. Matt Rose, what do you guess out of ten? Um, on first listening and very much enjoyed the story, even Susan's appearance, I'm going to rate it number 10. Okay, 10 out of 10 for Mr. Rose there. Jason, what say you, mate? Well, it was a bit slow at first, but caught up later on. I am, enjoyed Ace's performance, enjoyed the Doctor's performance. I definitely give this an 8 out of 10. Champion big man, glad you enjoyed it. Mr. Archer. Give it a number. I'm going to give it a, an eight and a half out of ten because I still think that the book is a, a thousand times a lot better to bring it out into flesh. So it's a good effort, but eight, out, eight and a half out of ten. I've oh, already been said that Phil doesn't like his flesh or his meat on the bone. Oh, eight well, and a half out of ten. Uh, well, how about you, Matt? Um, um, as we thought, we really thought that we could we different the difference of the book and the audio. Of course, the book's going to have more stuff in it that's to come the book is always better but mm -hmm. just by itself and of course having Kara Ann for reprise of Rose Susan I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten it was a great it was a great audio to hear excellent nine out of ten Elijah love you um I probably have to say I give it an eight and a half uh because it was a really good audio I thoroughly enjoyed it but I'd like to listen to it a second time 
just to see what other bits I catch because this one has a lot of stuff that you can pick up after a second listen, it seems like. So I'll definitely give it another listen and yeah, eight and a half out of ten. Okay, champion big man. And down Techie Colway, he has the beard that must be feared. Timbo, we'll give it a number. I'm gonna give it a nine out of ten. Elijah makes a, a good point though. It was very good. I think I picked up more and enjoyed it more the second time I listened to it. Um, and and uh, I, I would say I would again stress that this is a very good audio. If you if you if somebody asks you, hey, what's a good one to get into audios with? This would be a good one because it's very much like the, the TV series. I think. Okay, mate. Great stuff. And I will concur with both you and Elijah. Yeah, you might have to listen to this twice, but that doesn't detract from how good it is. Um, so with that in mind, folks, I'll go with an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, the regular TARDIS team are as sublime as ever. And, you know, you're off to the races. And it's nice to see them adapting more of these novels, be it the Virgin uh, New Adventure range or the, the, the Past Doctors range. So we'll see. We got, we got two coming out in December. We do. We have Original Sun and we have Cold Fusion in December. So uh, we'll make this up for the new year. So yeah, guys, uh, our inaugural episode on our new home of Drunk Eaters Dark Place is finito. Done, dusted in the can. Um, for those of you who couldn't make it this evening, please bear in mind, guys, everybody's welcome each and every week, even if you can't make it every week. And invites will always be extended. Please check out our, all of our regular buddies on all their various channels. We have Dr. Freedom and his daily news broadcasts and his Omega Files. We have Johnny Boys and Sammy Carter. We have Wade and Neil. Uh, who else have we got? We've got Susie with Tavis Boyd Radio. And we have the folks over at Geeks Assembled where they talk movies, TV shows, and just every general everyday musings that come to their inner mind. Go check them out, give them a like, give them a subscribe. As well as uh, to catch any of our previous episodes of Audio Who, you can find them on the Whovian channel, toddle on over there, and you'll find them there. And with that, we'll simply end this here. We hope you've enjoyed this cast, folks. We wish you all a safe and prosperous week. Be excellent to each other and yourselves, and try not to take the world too seriously. Booyah! Peace.